Hello and a very warm welcome to Sharachandra IS Academy, we are your dreams are our mission, this is Yatharth here. Today's video will be talking about the lost Humboldt Glacier from the country of Venezuela in Southern Americas. So in view of this we will be mapping, completely mapping the Southern Americas. Then we will be talking about various uh, geographical features such as Andes mountain ranges, the Hindu Kush ranges, alright and phenomena such as the El Nino and the global warming. What are the greenhouse gases and so on. Alright, we'll lastly see what is the effect on India. We'll also be talking about glaciers. What are they? Alright, how they are different from the ice fields. So these are the intricacies you should know for attempting the prelims. Alright. So let's start with the coverage what we are going to cover in this lecture. The first thing is Southern America's mapping. So of course we have done this many times and we'll keep doing this so that we can always remember it. All right. Next, we'll be talking about why glaciers in Venezuela. So, why should you expect to find glaciers in Venezuela? It's a question. Okay. Then we'll talk about the Catatumbo lightning, and we have already read about this. So, we have already covered this. So, we'll be reading just about the locations of the Maracaibo Lake as well as the Catatumbo River. All right. And what forms this lightning? This was recently new. So, let's just revise. Then let's talk about what are glaciers. Okay. What is the Andes mountain range? What is the, uh, let's say, expansion of Andes? In which countries it is present? Okay, this can be a question. Then the Humboldt Glacier, where it was located and so on. Finally, the global warming and the GHG effect on India. What is the El Nino and La Nina phenomena? In brief, okay, that have been responsible for the losing of the Humboldt Glacier from Venezuela. So they are very important to read. Then finally, we'll talk about the Hindu Kush mountain ranges near India and the effect on India and in general of melting glaciers. All right. So let's start this uh, mapping portion first of all. Just a second. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the Southern Americas. You can uh, see the Southern Americas here. So let's. Uh, we are not uh, focusing on the Northern American part, which is more like this. We can say. Okay, so we are talking about this part. Okay, so what is the largest country you can see here? I can see Brazil. Okay, so we'll just deal with Brazil at the center of the map. Let me just uh, rub this. Okay, so let's take Brazil as a, this shape which is, it generally shows. Alright, like this. Now, what can, uh, if you say this is Brazil, so what countries do you see in bottom? One we see is Uruguay here. Okay, so please take care of this Uruguay. Many people just forget about it. Okay, then there is Paraguay. Leaving a small gap in the middle here. Okay, we'll leave this gap for which country? We'll leave this for Argentina. Okay, so we'll just cover Argentina here later. But this is Paraguay to remember. Okay, or you can just uh, say that it is Par Uruguay. Okay, Uruguay and Par Uruguay. Alright, the next country which we see is Bolivia. It's uh, quite a big country. You see the Bolivia here. Okay, the next one we see is Peru. Let's just take Peru like this. So this is Peru. Now Peru has uh, borders with different countries. Alright, one it has border here with Ecuador. It has border here with Ecuador. Then it has borders. The Ecuador and Peru both have borders with one upper or northern country known as the Colombia. Very important country, Colombia. All right, all of these have borders with Brazil except for the Ecuador. And then we come to the next country, which is Venezuela, which is the one we are talking about. Okay, so we see the Venezuela here. So this country is Venezuela. So what peculiar country we came across, the Ecuador, which is not having any border with the Brazil. Okay, now there are a few smaller countries such as the Guiana. There was a news between Guiana and Venezuela very recently. There was a land dispute sort of. Alright, so this is Guiana. Then there is a small country known as the Suriname. Known as the Suriname. And finally, one small country here at the last known as the French Guiana. Okay, you can expand Brazil till here and so on just to make it look proportional. But uh, we are just focusing on the mapping portion or border portions here. Okay, so now we have covered already Uruguay and so on. So two countries are left with us. Okay, one is the Chile which runs across the complete border after Peru. Okay, which makes it like looks like a Chile. 
so you can just remember like chili it looks like chili okay here and the border filling country after the uruguay is argentina it's argentina all right so what countries we saw we saw the um, now without uh, seeing the map we'll just say we saw the brazil in the center then we saw the uruguay here then we saw the paraguay here then we saw the bolivia here then we saw the peru here we saw the ecuador here we saw the colombia here we saw the venezuela here we saw the guena here we saw the suriname here and we saw the french guena here all right and finally we saw two more countries the chile and the argentina all right so this is the basic mapping of the southern americas now i hope you will remember okay we have done uh, african mapping also multiple times all right so this will give you a basic idea of how the subcontinent it okay and now let's talk about why should you uh, you know expect to find glaciers in the southern americas because when you see this region this is our sahara desert region okay there are no glaciers here in the sahara desert then you see this region the saudi arabian region you see the iran here iraq here all right you see the rajasthan region here okay all this region you cannot expect to find any glaciers at least okay this is the saharan region this is the sahel region sub saharan region and so on okay this is the saudi arabias we talked about the saudi arabias very recently okay this we talked about the uh, thar registan or thar desert so why are we saying that we can find the glaciers here in venezuela okay now you must be knowing there is venezuela this is venezuela okay this is our colombia ecuador and so on all right so this this country is venezuela here this is the marasic kibo lake you can say so very clearly visible okay so why should you expect to find glaciers here that is a big question and this is a map of the this is the recent weather map okay so this this is showing that how much uh, warmth or heat is here okay, in these countries and you can see a similar pattern of heat right now in the southern americas here in the north uh, south of the north americas as well as mexico hendras and so on okay but we are talking about glaciers here so you can see a thin line here thin strip here okay running down the ecuador peru okay chile these countries especially here you can see a very very uh, cold line okay so it is peculiar it is because of the andes mountain just a second i'll change the pen color okay this is the akanagua range highest point of the andes mountain so we are not seeing glaciers here because of the latitude all right we are seeing the glaciers because of the high elevation so it's a geographical feature it's a geographical feature not a climate feature okay on the lower lands the temperature is still very warm and what we want to say or show that even on this altitude the glaciers has been melting because of the global warming global warming okay now you must be remembering also the el nino effect we saw here okay on this shore and between the australian shore so we'll be talking about that also but uh, let's first go on just a second and clear this katatumbo uh, lightning also meanwhile all right so this is the portion we are talking about again venezuela okay this is lake maracaibo or maracaibo i don't know how to pronounce this exactly but it is maracaibo or maracaibo all right so this is the katatumbo river so what happens because of the andes mountain ranges these are very high mountains okay wind flows from here from the caribbean sea all right and it forms the colombo nimbus clouds here very tall clouds these clouds are the one which generate electricity and as soon as they reach the lower lands of this lake maracaibo near the area here okay and the water is coming here from the katatumbo river also so at this point they create this high electricity zones 
okay the high lightning zones so katatumbo lightning is from of venezuela at least 300 days of the year so majority of the time out of 360 days we can say all right 300 days of the year a vast ranging storm forms at the mouth of the katatumbo river here this portion okay it is lightning unequal in strength can be seen from 250 miles away 250 miles away and was used as a navigational beacon by the colonial sailors so what 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 we are talking about the colonial sailors because they are coming from the caribbean sea spain portugal side and they want to come to the southern americas all right through gulf of venezuela or so on and they want to land here okay in the venezuela and colombia so that they can colonize so you must be knowing that spanish is the frequently used language there spanish and portugali because the uh, so you can relate it to the colonialism as well all right they would be landing from the gulf of venezuela to colombia and so on you must uh, have seen this pirates of caribbean movie also so this was majorly featured in that uh, okay now let's talk about uh, glaciers okay one more thing uh, the glacier that we are talking about is the humboldt glacier and you must be seeing this humboldt name at multiple places this this name uh, this is humboldt vale also humboldt glacier also and there are multiple humboldt glaciers so who was this humboldt okay this is a major question so the humboldt's full name was friedrich wilhelm henrich alexander von humboldt and he existed he lived between 16 1769 and 1859 all right so he was a traveler he was a biogeologist we can say and he traveled extensively in the americas he was the first one to explore and describe them as uh, let's say non spanish european scientific point of view also he was very uh, one of the very first people to propose that uh, the southern america and africa the southern america as well as africa were joined once in the past okay so he was a famous you can say scientist of his time a traveler of his time so on his name multiple things have been named and one of these things are a humboldt glacier the one we are talking about which has been lost in venezuela lost means it is not classified as a glacier anymore so first of all we need to see that what is a glacier itself so there are some basic characteristic quant uh, sorry qualities of a glacier it is large first of all large means there has to be a certain area perennial uh, that means existing in all weather forms all weather uh, times accumulation of crystal and ice ice means clear as to then snow rock sediment and often liquid water as well which originates on land okay and moves down slope under the influence of its own weight and gravity that means it's dynamic that means it dynamic so typically glaciers exist and may even form in areas where mean annual temperature are close to the freezing point that means 0 degree or low winter precipitation produces significant accumulation of snow okay that means much humidity should be there or water should be there at least temperatures throughout the rest of the year do not result in the complete loss of the previous winter snow accumulation that means it should not become zero snow or so, something like that okay so a perpetually frozen area you can just say but two things to remember that glaciers are dynamic and they are mostly formed of the crystalline ice okay now let's talk about uh, venezuela why we are talking about venezuela just a second okay so venezuela has become the first country in modern history to lose all its glaciers to lose all its glaciers so it had earlier uh, let's say six glaciers okay and now there are zero left it had six glaciers earlier where in the tall ranges of andes mountains so you can see the andes mountain coming here in venezuela a branch of the andes mountain coming in the venezuela and then you can see the mount akenugua also the highest point in the southern americas it is 6900 meter tall sorry 6900 meters tall okay so we can see the andes mountain ranges here much uh, uh, can be seen much in bolivia here okay bolivia peru which countries they are running from venezuela colombia then we see the ecuador then we see the peru bolivia chile and uh, there is bit in argentina but not a lot but argentina we have okay but brazil there is not okay andes mountain not found in brazil so what we see here that all of the six glaciers have been lost from the venezuela and the last one was this humboldt glacier humboldt glacier 
Okay, so it has been classified as an ice field. It has not disappeared completely, but its classification has been changed to or demoted to ice field because the area has been lost. The area has been lost. Now what we see, uh, we can use this line in the answer writing also that according to a new study, okay, the glaciers are shrinking and they will be lost by 2100. Okay, uh, as per the current climate change as per the cli current climate change trends. So all of the glaciers we have will be melt by 2100. So in the next 70 to 80 years, we can see a huge drastic change in the Earth's overall environment. And we will be seeing a rise in sea levels and all of the things we'll be talking about. But let's uh, just say, uh, just a second. Okay, let's just first see the Humboldt Glacier. Okay, it was located here in the Andes mountain ranges falling in the Venezuela. So you can see in the 1988, it was uh, rather big in size or bigger in size than it is in 2015. And now it is 2023-24. Okay, it was completely lost in 2023 actually. The studies have uh, now been revealed only. Okay, but it was completely lost in 2023. Only a minuscule portion of it is remaining anymore, which cannot be called a glacier. So this now leaves us to the question that why are glaciers disappearing? Okay, so reason is quite obvious. It is global warming. Okay, because something, if it's made of ice, it will disappear only if it get heated. And the only heater regarding to earth is sun. If the heat is not coming from inside of the earth, the one we are not talking about, then the only heater that earth is having is sun. Okay, and sun is throwing heat in the form of rays or electromagnetic waves of light. Now what happens? We can call it radiation. So solar radiation passes through the clear atmosphere the earth has. Then most radiation absorbed by the earth's surface and warms it. Okay, so this is known as the warming of the earth. This is not itself in um, itself harmful. But some solar radiation is reflected by the earth and the atmosphere. Okay, so this is basically reflected. So this we don't have to deal with. We are just talking about the radiation that finally reaches the earth and is absorbed by it. Now some of the infrared radiation passes through the atmosphere and some is absorbed and re-emitted in all molecule. Okay, eventually whatever is reaching will be going back. Okay, let's say most is absorbed and it is used as the uh, warmth to the earth okay but some of it will also be reflected back so this you can read in the heat budget what is happening essentially three things are happening one is that some radiation is not at all reaching the surface it is reflected by the atmosphere okay on the earth also some is reaching the earth surface and getting used okay and some is what happening that it is absorbed and remitted by the earth in all molecules okay so it is warming the earth's atmosphere as well as the lower atmosphere and particles. Now, we this is the radiation that we are trying to figure out how to completely send it back, okay, and how to not stop it from going back. So, let's talk about the greenhouse gases. Okay, so what is the greenhouse effect? Greenhouse effect is, uh, let's say, some gases present here. And it is actually absorbing the heat that is emitted out of the earth. So, it is creating a heat blanket for the earth not letting this heat pass out to upper atmosphere or out of atmosphere. Okay, so if this gas is removed, then the heat would be able to go outside. But because of this heat blanket, the heat is not able to go outside. So what is creating this, uh, this layer, which gas is creating the layer? There are multiple gases known as the greenhouse gases. Okay, so which is the most prominent greenhouse gas? We have carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay. Carbon dioxide. Okay, next we have the methane, that is CH4. Ne uh, next is nitrous oxide, NO2. Okay, and next is the fluorinated gases. Whatever fluorinated, we have F, we have Cl, okay, we have B or some and I also. Okay, but we are mostly talking about the F and Cl, chlorine and fluorine. So, fluorocarbon and chlorocarbon gases, alright, or chlorofluorocarbons and so on. So these have fl uh, fluorinated gases, their impact is much more than the carbon dioxide. Their impact is 1000 to 10,000 uh, 10, times more than the carbon dioxide. And they are used in the, uh, let's say, compressed heating solutions, compressed cooling solutions, actually. Okay, question also came in 2023 that what cannot be made by these gases? Answer was lubricant. 
okay where they are not used in the lubricants so you can see uh, the impact of these gases versus the quantity so what we are seeing that most prominent gas is carbon dioxide at 76 percent so these are the gases which are warming the planet okay or rather we say that they are the one who are not allowing the planet to cool down okay so now we'll just revise the exact location of the humboldt glacier this was located here just a second i'll change the pen color again okay so this was located here on the southeast of the maracaibo lake and little bit deep in the territory of the venezuela okay but in the ranges of the andes mountain this range was there one is this range very very small range is here also okay and it extends like this so we can see here just a second that this is the andes mountain ranges okay let's do the mapping here again this is the brazil a small country we saw this is the uruguay you saw the Paraguay, when you saw the Bolivia, we saw the Peru, we saw the Ecuador, we saw the Colombia, we saw the Venezuela, we saw the Guiana, we saw the Suriname, we saw the French Guiana, we saw the Brazil again, Uruguay again, we saw the Argentina and we saw the Chile. Okay, so we now clear that where Andes mountain Indies are traversing or going through. But now let's see why this happened. Okay, what was the major cause? So major cause was the El Nino effect. El Nino effect that took place in July. 2023 okay very recent el nino effect so let's see what is this el nino effect Wha what happened because of this okay so normal year normal year what happens the warm trade winds go from here south southern america side to the australian side okay and the cool uh, let's say water upwelling of water is there cold water upwelling is there very good fishing season for the southern americans uh, or let's say in the chile and so on okay the this is colder here it is colder here and it is warmer in the australia where it rains sort of okay because the warmer air goes here it takes the humidity also and it rains in australia now what we are talking about is el nino year okay el nino year what happens these trade winds stop okay and uh, what happens that uh, not only they stop they start going back also a little bit so it becomes hotter here in the southern america side rather and it becomes drier here okay so very bad for both the parties okay upwelling is not also seen here so although it rains more in the southern americas in the el nino but it is still hotter okay and because of this heat only what has happened the humboldt glacier was lost from the venezuela and please remember venezuela has lost all of its six glaciers all of its six glaciers so now let's talk about the india what can happen for india and where india may get affected okay so you can see the highest peaks here and the glaciers here in the blue now let's figure out that where these glaciers actually are this you see the afghanistan and the hindu kush himalayan ranges okay these are the hindu kush mountain ranges the pamir plateau and so on you can see the pamir plateau here okay this is called the roof of the world because one of the highest places in the world and these are the hindu kush mountain ranges in the upper region you can completely see the glaciers okay these are the siachen glaciers and so on multiple glaciers here then you can see the glaciers here in the great himalayan ranges okay in the nepal and so on and they extend up to sikkim sikkim himalayas all right we have done the himalayan mapping completely already so these are the sikkim himalayas and so on you can see some glaciers here also in the grand canyon of the this river siang river and the dihang river which is also known as the Brahmaputra river okay sangpo river so there are small glaciers here also on the patkaibam uh, area okay now what we see that these glaciers are also melting these glaciers are also melting there was recently a flood in the tista river of the sikkim if you remember okay there were uh, some accidents in the uttarakhand region also the kedarnath accident was one of them of the 2020 uh, 2013 okay if i correctly remember so what is happening uh, uh, actually the global warming is happening okay now you can see the temperatures in the Rajasthan and nearby areas, they are closing to 48, 48 degrees Celsius. In the Delhi also, you can see 47 degrees Celsius. All right. So all of this is a, a disaster, what is happening to the world. And all of these glaciers will be melted mostly by 2100 because uh, as we saw recently to the Global Plastic Treaty also, fossil fuel production and uh, they are not being stopped. Okay, because of uh, the conglomerates, because of the capitalist, uh, uh, let's say, desires. So this all is happening in the world. This is all happening on the ground reality. Although we still need to present a two-way diplomatic picture for this. But the reality of world is a little bit grim right now. 
Okay, so what we are seeing that uh, if we do not control ourselves completely, uh, then by 2100, we'll be seeing significant effects. Okay, now let's see that what will happen if all the glaciers are lost. Okay, so you can see this, uh, the Southern Americas here in the picture. Okay, so the Antarctic region is here. And you can see the Northern Americas here and the Greenland region is here. So basically our North Pole and South Pole. So these are very, very big areas of ice. So what will happen if they melt? There will be a significant increment areas of ice. So if they melt, there will be a significant increment in the sea level. There will be sea level rise first of all. So all of these regions will drown. Okay. All of the coastal regions will drown. The coastal communities will face multiple hazards. So even in India and all over the world, because the sea level is same all over the world. Okay. Like that is the basic uh, premise of the sea level, that it is same all over the world. So all countries will have areas which will drown. Recently you saw the Indonesia changes capital to Nusantra. So what happened that uh, the sea level would rise and the Java was uh, drowning, sort of. Okay. So glaciers, what happens? Let's just make a mind map that what happens when glaciers go down. Okay, the first thing that will happen, uh, the glaciers are crucial source of fresh water. Crucial source of fresh water. So fresh water goes down. You see the Gangotri glacier and so on, the source of Ganga, Yamuna and so many rivers. Okay, once these uh, become dry, the rivers will also become dry. Okay. And secondly, their disappearance would mean that one would have to entirely depend on, on spot rainfall for fresh water. But right now, the glaciers are major source. Okay, second thing, the cold water. Glaciers have cold water. And cold water is required for some species for their thrival. Okay, this is uh, required for many aquatic species. Many aquatic species. They cannot survive in the hot water or warm water. Okay. So this is, um, uh, let's say we are talking about the upper regions of Himalayas. There are multiple species there which cannot survive in the warmer water. So glacier loss will directly impact such species, aquatic species. They will also go down. One of the examples can be Gangetic Dolphin and so on. Okay. Uh, third thing is rise in sea level. Rise in the sea level. So sea level, uh, they will be, uh, let's say, posing problems to the coastal communities and so on. And finally, if we see what is the effect on Venezuela, okay, Venezuela's loss will be cultural right now because these were not very, very big glaciers. These were small glaciers. Although they attracted tourists and tourists as well as trackers. Okay, and they were one of the identification of the, uh, let's say, Venezuela. So what happens if we lose the Himalaya? Okay, if India loses the Himalaya, let's say, okay, something will happen, the human race will survive, but Himalaya will not anymore be associated with the identity of India. Okay, so that will be a big problem for us because much of our identity will be lost, the cultural identity, except for all these things, including all these things, there will be much loss. Okay, so because these were small glaciers right now, the most uh, loss that Venezuela has faced is cultural identity. Okay, for tourist activities, mountaineering and so on. So they will not naturally be coming to Venezuela because there is nothing to go there now. Okay, only an ice, ice sheet instead of a glacier. So that is what. Alright, so this is the end of the lecture. Thank you very much for your presence here. This is Yatharthya signing off. I wish you a very good day ahead. Uh, we are careful of the heat waves. I have actually caught a heat wave in recent days. And that is why I have been unable to create these lectures. Alright, but see you soon again. And have a great day. Keep studying.